Hey guys, welcome to my fabulous world. Another day, another opportunity to connect with you. I love it all the time. But remember, I want you to click subscribe, uh, click notification so that you know the next time we post a video and like, comment as I speak. If you have a question, put it out there. I do read all your comments and sometimes I respond to your comments. So I take them seriously. Feedback that you give, I take it seriously. So go ahead and do that. Today, I want us to talk about mentoring, mentorship. You know, mentorship is something that we talk about all the time. We are all encouraged to find mentors and everyone, many people would approach me or approach you, approach many people to say you want them to be your mentors. Uh, but I want to talk about um, how do you find a good mentor? How do you choose? Uh, how, do you, how do you conduct a mentor-mentee relationship why does how what makes it successful um uh, uh, so that so that we can all be on the same page uh, here's the thing i mean i have had mentors in my life uh, but i've never asked anyone to be my mentor um, and i would say that the first mentor that i that i i've, I've had uh, that i want to recognize who's had a huge impact on me is professor jill edler she taught me at vets from honors uh, she became my supervisor at honors, at masters, and at PhD. Uh, at my request, of course, at masters and PhD, because you have the right to choose whoever you want. Um, and I have, uh, I have admired, I've learned how to be a mentee and how to be a mentor through my relationship with her. And um, and my relationship with her was such that um, uh, when I write something. Uh, I would give her to read it and give me feedback. And then as time went on, she started giving me stuff to read and give her feedback, right? Um, and when it's not my job, I'm not reporting to her and, and you know, that's just what it is. Um, and so the relationship grows. So how do you get a mentor? You, you, the person who wants a mentor, you have to look for someone whose career choices, career and ethical choices you admire. That's what you look at. How, how is this person going around about her career or his career? Um, uh, like study carefully. Don't just look at uh, they were promoted at this university, they became professor, you know, after one year of having a PhD. That, that might not be saying anything about their career, right? So check. Why do you want? Don't just look at the car they're driving, the money they have. Don't look at the money. Look at the career choices they make because that is what you want to learn from them. All right? And be clear to yourself. Write them down and perhaps spend a week following them, uh, unawares, and watching them. Or if you are not in the same uh, place of work or institution, ask to shadow them. Then you shadow them so that you can get to know them better. When you shadow someone and you move with them from meeting to meeting, you get to know them a little better, more than just when you see them at a distance. And then you can say, this is what I like, this is what I like. Or you can decide, I, don't, I can't work with this one. Great, he's doing well, but we won't be able, I won't be able to be a mentor. Am I saying you should never ask people to be your mentor? You can, uh, but the fact that you've asked me to be your mentor doesn't mean it's going to be great. Uh, it's what you do afterwards, okay? It's what you do. And also, it's why you ask me. Only you know what you want from me. I don't know what you want from me. Uh, you, maybe you just want the name. Do you want the name only? Do you want the contacts that I have? But then in that case, it doesn't help to choose me because you want the things around me. Um, so be clear about what you want. I can give an analogy of having a ball. Maybe you come to me because I'm, I'm holding a ball. What's going to happen if that ball goes away? Okay, so you come to, you, you approach a person because you're clear about what you will get from them, who they are, how they run their careers, how they, the choices they make, and so on and so forth. So be clear. If the person says, yes, I'm willing to be your mentor, thereafter, the ball is in your court. It is now your responsibility to get what you want from them. You set up the appointments because you ask them to be your mentor. You set up the appointments, you go and meet them. 
uh, you ask them the questions, you ask them for help. Um, and, and you'll see as the relationship grows, they might now start asking you, how are you doing? Uh, where is that? Did you write that proposal? Don't expect that a mentor will forever be following you, chasing you, checking whether you're doing this or that. They are busy, they have their own careers and their own, own lives and their own problems. Just like everyone, all of us carry our own challenges and we navigate them. If you have a mentor who follows you up that way, hallelujah. You should got to appreciate that. Now, it is your, the job is in your hands to make, to make them, to get what you want from the mentor. And then, of course, what makes the mentor-mentee relationship successful is reciprocity. Reciprocity makes it makes any relationship work because the mentor has got something to get from you and you have something to get from them. It might not be the same thing. The mentor might be learning a lot from you and you may not even be aware because let me tell you, we learn a lot from young people. Uh, we learn a lot from young people, from the questions they ask, uh, your mentor can start asking you questions from the way you write, from the way you, you navigate things. And sometimes you might offer to help them with something. You can see that they're dealing with this and you can say, can I do this for you? You know, uh, reciprocity. So that because you want them, you want them to miss you. You want them to want you next to them so that they get what they want. You get what you want. That's how relationship becomes successful. If you come to meet with your mentor, you haven't done what you agreed with her on, you come to meet, you complain about work, you complain again about your boss, you complain about your lecturer or whatever, all the time. And whilst you have agreed on tasks to do and you haven't done them, it won't help you. Neither will it help the mentor. So you do your part, you involve her or him, and then... You offer sometimes to do things. You make sure you don't miss their birthday. Hey, you never miss their birthday. Otherwise, you're not serious, okay? Um, the other thing that I did with my mentor that made, uh, the, and, and what my mentor did that made it work is because my mentor was very clear with me that uh, she, she will know that she has done a good job if one day I can come to her and teach her things that she didn't know or introduce her to people that she didn't know even though we are in the same discipline right so basically she was saying i will be so happy if you can success succeed so much that you surpass me she wasn't threatened by the fact that i might get bigger than she is or i might get known more than she is or i might get i might be promoted beyond her she wasn't worried about it. in fact as a matter of fact she said, I don't want to be to get into administration. I don't want to be a dean. I don't want to be a vice chancellor. I'm happy to be a professor. In fact, I remember that there were three years when she reported to me because I became director, a founding director of the Marang Center for Maths and Science Education at VETS when we started it. And she reported to me. And imagine, she's reporting, she was reporting to me and I had been her student and she was continuing to be my mentor. And of course, she also said, you know, you say I'm your mentor, but you're actually mentoring me, okay? Because I never asked her, but I called her my mentor. And she said, but you are mentoring me because she would give me her papers, her work, give me feedback on this or whatever. Sometimes she would come and talk to me about ideas, like I want to do this project, whatever, and I would give her feedback. And she knew, one thing she knew and she knows about me is that I say it as it is. I say it as it is. And so she preferred talking with me about when she's got a project or do something because she knew that I will not lie to her because I'm scared of her and say something is good. She knew that I would say, yo, this is bad or this is not gonna succeed or yo, the teachers are gonna chase you out of that school. You better not go with that with that to them. You know, so, so, so the, relationship, the relationship goes that way, then it becomes much more successful. The other thing, I said, don't forget birthdays, but the other thing is that um, uh, I, I, I figure that, you know, I'm getting a lot accolades, whatever, and my mentor is not getting 
uh, uh, much and there isn't always an opportunity to recognize to recognize her so i started nominating her for awards you know i nominated my mentor for every award there is in research in south africa i even nominated her for an international award i made sure and she's not that kind of person she'll say ah oh, no i want to do it and i'll say no we must you must you deserve this you must do this and i would nominate her or get people to work with me and we nominate her and then and so so you think about it you know uh, you are getting accolades your mentor is just as human as you are they need they need to be stroked as well they need to be appreciated as well so if there's an award that you can nominate them for do that if there's something that they can benefit them go go ahead and make them aware of it so that they can see the relationship is um, uh, reciprocal, is working for them as well. Uh, and for me, for my mentor, I also just, like three years before she retired, I got people, uh, his, her colleagues internationally, her peers, you know, um, people who are working in mathematics education, I got them, uh, I wrote to them and asked them uh, that they should join me in working on a, a, a book to celebrate her work, to celebrate her scholarly work. And so these people from all over the world agreed because this is their collaborator, this is their peer, they agreed. To, and the idea was to look through her work and say the impact of the work or write papers that are relating, that illuminate something in her work and so on. And I was an editor and I wrote the first chapter, I think. And, and it was just so amazing. She didn't know that we're doing this. And I talked to her family. We included the last chapter that was sort of focusing on family and so on. Because when we drive our careers, build our careers, families make sacrifices. And I wanted, I wanted her family to feel recognized as well. And then three years later, when she was about to retire and we were at a conference in Germany, I talked to her husband that she, he must come to the conference. The husband came to the conference as well. And voila, I had invited people to this book launch. She came as well. And boom, we launched the book. And she couldn't believe it. She was in tears. And I was so happy that I've been able to say thank you to this woman who helped me build a successful career, who continues to be in my life. It doesn't matter that I also am giving feedback to her work. I'm mentoring her in a way. But if she didn't start me up, I wouldn't be here. So when you, when you choose a mentor, you choose a mentor that you also want to see them succeed. And mentor, if you agree to mentor somebody, be comfortable with the fact that they might succeed beyond you. They might surpass you. Uh, they might achieve what you haven't achieved. And that is okay. Because the mark of a successful person is when you produce others who are better than you. So, so be comfortable with that. And also, people who, who are able to mentor, don't wait for someone to ask you to be their mentor. Just, you don't even have to negotiate with them. Uh, just follow them, ask them how their work is, tell them I'm available to read uh, your chapters if you want you know you're not forcing them if you want i can do that and give you feedback uh, don't say uh, just contact me whenever you need you know that's thing that people do uh, don't hesitate to call me if you need uh, tell me if you need anything and if you say to them you need five million suddenly it doesn't work be explicit i'd be delighted to read what you write if you like i'd be delighted to talk to you about your new job, if you like. If you need help about starting in this company that I worked with, uh, please, let's talk. Or, hey, I worked at that company. And I enjoyed it so much. And I would like to share uh, what I learned from there because you are going to navigate um, uh, the space and you might get the same thing. Or, hey, I've got an experience with that company. And, and I think it would be a great idea that we talk uh, um, uh, so that I can show you where, the, you know, important signposts and potential pitfalls so that you can succeed. Offer yourself as a mentor. 
because it is in that given. Your success as a professional is in bringing more people who are like you or better than you. That's the marker of success. Uh, otherwise, if you don't, then it's not that successful. For me, I mentor because it gives me so much satisfaction. You know, it gives me so much satisfaction. Like, like you feel like you're making a contribution to the world. Uh, but I also mentor because I learn so much from young people. So much. I mean, things that I thought I know. And I know you think technology, whatever, not technology, no. But so many things that I, I, I realize, my God, I don't know this. I would have backed off from this. Now I'm not because I'm relating with these people, with this young person, or with this, these young people. So do it. You will be surprised what you will benefit from the experience of mentoring. And once I end this uh, uh, podcast, let me, let me say a shout out to uh, Yolanda Tuba. You know, Yolanda started a mentorship uh, platform, which she calls the Mentorship Boardroom. It's a platform online. Uh, she launched it, I think, 2021. Uh, asked many people to be mentors. And mentees can go on the platform. People can go on the platform and choose who they want to be their mentor. There's top people there. And there are people that I'm mentoring. Uh, uh, I think when it started, I accepted five people to mentor. And one of them still is in contact. And I meet with her online. And that's because she wanted to come into academia. And, and I'm pleased to say she has. She was outside when we started and we've been walking this journey. She's taken the relationship to manage it, to, to set up appointments herself. And, and because she's doing that, all I need to do is to make myself available. And then, and then we meet. So shout out to Yolanda Tuba, fellow black woman, strong woman, a woman who believes in mentorship and did something about it because she knows what it has done for her. She gave us an opportunity, people like me, to mentor beyond the people that we know, beyond the people that we come into contact with, because the platform creates that possibility. So I wish you the best mentor, mentor mentee relationship. Work at it. You lead it. It works. Thank you so much for joining me. Remember to be authentic, to be yourself. Because that's the only way you can do you. All the best. See you tomorrow.